In this video, we'll do some example problems where we find antiderivatives to uh, functions that are a little more complicated than what we saw on the table from the last video. So, for example, let's start out with this. I want to find the antiderivative of x squared plus 2x plus 1. So this, again, means that the derivative of what I want to find is x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now I know what to find what the original function looked like. And I can use my power rule for antiderivatives from before to say that, remind ourselves, if the derivative is x to the n, then the original function looked like x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus a constant. So here I have a derivative that is uh, x squared plus 2x plus 1. I guess the first thing to realize is that uh, when you take the derivative, you take the derivative of each part separately and then add them together. So this is really the same thing as finding the antiderivative of x squared plus the antiderivative of 2x plus the antiderivative of 1. So when you take the derivative, you can break it apart and take the derivative of each part of a sum. And you can do the same thing when you find antiderivatives. So using our rule, let's just remind ourselves what our rule is. I'll put it up here. That the antiderivative of x to the n is equal to x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus a constant. The antiderivative of x squared dx is I add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. And it could be plus a constant. And here, uh, this is 2 times x, so the antiderivative is 2 times I add 1 to the power and divide by the new power and plus another constant. Now these constants may not be the same thing, so I'm going to label 1 as constant 1, the second constant is constant 2, or C2, and the third antiderivative I'm trying to find is just the antiderivative of 1. Uh, well, we can actually think of this in our general antiderivative power rule here. We can think of 1 as 1 times x to the 0 power, and so we add 1 to the power, and divide by the new power and add a constant. Now I can simplify this quite a bit. First of all, if I have a number plus a number plus a number, three constants that are added together, I just get another number. I just get another constant. So typically what we do is we combine all these constants together and just write them as 1 plus c at the very end. Plus c. Alright, the x cubed plus 3, I can't simplify that too much. I'll just write it down. The 2x squared divided by 2, I can cancel the 2's, so I get x squared, and uh, divided by 1, I usually don't write the divided by 1 or the power of 1, so I can just write x cubed plus x squared plus x plus a constant. So this is, to recap, the antiderivative, or the indefinite integral, of x squared plus 2x plus 1. Let's do a little bit harder problem. Uh, what if we have something that looks like this? Antiderivative of 5x squared plus 2 times the square root of x minus 1 over x. So here we have uh, something that we've seen before, something that is x to a power. This is actually x to a power. We'll just write it as x to the one half. I'm going to rewrite this thing as 5x squared plus 2 times x to the one half power. And then here, this is going to be uh, minus x to the negative one. All right, so let's take this one at a time. The antiderivative here of this first term is going to be 5 times 
x to the, we can add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. And here, again, add 1 to the power, so we get 3 halves, and divide by the new power, so divide by 3 halves. Here, I'm going to get in trouble. If I add 1 to the power and then divide by the new power, I would be adding 1 to the power, which is which make it 0, and dividing by 0. There's big trouble there. And that's a reminder that uh, the derivative, uh, you can't use the power rule if you have a power of negative 1, because uh, you'd be dividing by 0. The power rule does not work in that situation. Uh, instead, we have this other rule for 1 over x, or x to the negative 1. If we have 1 over x, then the antiderivative is the natural log of the absolute value of x. So this last term here is minus the natural log of the absolute value of x. And then I'm going to add one catch-all constant at the very end, plus c, that takes care of the constants that I would have added in each of these terms. And I can simplify this just, just a little bit by uh, taking care of this divided fraction here. 5 thirds x cubed plus, now remember when I have a fraction on the bottom I invert and multiply. So when I invert and multiply I multiply by 2 thirds and so this becomes 4 thirds x to the 3 halves and then minus the natural log of absolute value of x plus my constant. And just to recap, this was the antiderivative 5x squared plus 2 times the square root of x minus 1 over x. And to check my work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of this answer that I got and make sure it's the same thing as what I had inside of the integral that I was asked to find the antiderivative of. So to take the derivative, the reason why we double check things like this is it's, we have a lot of experience taking derivatives, it's very easy to take the derivative, and so it usually is fairly straightforward to take the derivative of our answer and find what we have, uh, make sure that it's equal to what we have inside the integral sign. So let's take the derivative, this is uh, 5 uh, times 3x squared, so that's 5 thirds times 3x squared, plus 4 thirds, and I pull the 3 halves down, x to the 1 half, and then the derivative of natural log of absolute value of x is 1 over x, and the derivative of the constant, the plus c, is just 0. And if I simplify this, I get the 3's cancel, so I got 5x squared, and the 3's cancel here, and 4 divided by 2 is 2x to the 1 half, and minus 1 over x. So I do indeed end up with, I'm going to take the derivative of my antiderivative, the derivative of my answer, I end up with the thing that was inside of the integral sign, which is what I want. Okay, let's do a little bit more complicated problem. It looks a little more complicated until we simplify it a little bit. The antiderivative of x plus 1 over the square root of x. Um, typically, antiderivative problems can look really, really complicated, and there's tricks to simplifying them to make them uh, easier to take the antiderivative. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to break up my fraction. So if I break up my fraction, I have x divided by the square root of x plus 1 divided by the square root of x. And now I can just take the antiderivative, uh, simplify it a little bit, cancel the, these terms, and take the antiderivative using my power rule. So let me simplify first. x divided by the square root of x is the square root of x, and then plus 1 divided by the square root of x and rewriting it in terms of the powers to make it easier. This is the antiderivative of x to the 1 half plus x to the negative 1 half. And now I can use my power rule for integrals. This is add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. 
and here add 1 to the power and divide by the new power and then always 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 add my constant and I can simplify this a little bit uh, again inverting and multiplying I get 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus 2 x to the 1 half plus a constant and I always always check by taking the derivative of my antiderivative and check to make sure it's the same thing I had inside of the integral sign so if I take the derivative I end up with 2 thirds so this is my check 2 thirds times I pull the power down 3 halves x to the 1 half plus 2 pull the power down times 1 half x to the negative 1 half plus 0 and uh, the 2 thirds and 3 halves cancel so I get x to the 1 half 2 and 1 half cancel so I get x to the negative 1 half which is indeed what I had inside of my integral sign here so the check checks out